Hey there, Chris Kroll here, Managing Editor of Solar Builder with another solar distancing episode. Uh, today, I am actually joined by Russ Minnick, uh, Chief Marketing Officer of Generac Power Systems. Hey, Russ. Hey there. Um, did I say your last name correctly? I forgot to check before we started You chatting. did. You did. Okay. And, uh, thanks for uh, making the time to have us today. Yeah, no problem. Uh, thanks for your interest in the series. So, you know, with solar distancing, we want to try to get back to some of the basics of uh, solar storage and a little bit of the generator world. And that's why I was really interested in chatting with you. Obviously, Generac is known for establishing the home uh, backup generator market. And now you guys are trying to do the same for energy storage. Um, so I was hoping you could help us compare and contrast it to a little bit. Um, so let's maybe just start with the generator backup. And if you could go over the pros and cons of that performance wise. Yeah, so I mean, we uh, just to take a quick step back, we we invented that product back in the uh, early '90s, and uh, there was no market. It was a new new thing, a new device, and uh, and we've been pioneering that ever since. And it's it's now about a one one and a half one point four billion dollar annual market in the, in the United States or North America. So um, we've uh, we've learned a lot of lessons on market creation and. How to how to pioneer uh, emerging products uh, that that have helped us, I think, in storage. But um, pros and cons on a on a generator is um, you know we've got an aging demographic and climate change that's driving uh, some pretty severe weather events. The grid itself is uh, you know it's in many many cases it's 40, 50 years old. Um, you can and the the basic uh, technology of the grid hasn't changed. I mean, you can look at pictures from. Uh, you know, 1918 and there's telephone poles with wires on them and stuff. So not a lot has changed in that regard and it's pretty vulnerable. And uh, to repair the grid or, or to make it uh, more resilient and would be really kind of undergrounding it, which you see in some new construction areas, but to underground the grid would literally cost trillions of trillions of dollars. Um, I guess in, in light of today's relief packages, that trillions of dollars is nothing. But but back in the day, trillions of dollars was, uh, was a lot of money. So we don't see you know, like a crazy uh, undergrounding of the grid going on in any any big uh, accelerated fashion. So a backup generator uh, is a is a cost effective way to uh, give homeowners uh, really good resiliency. And um, the uh, it senses when the power goes off, it turns on automatically. And within about eight seconds, uh, your entire house is running uh, with with power as if nothing, nothing happens. So um, then it shuts off, cools down and, and and that's it. So it's uh, it's very convenient. It doesn't run out of fuel because it runs on natural gas, and and so you don't have to worry about refueling and all that all the troubles you have on portable generators. Not running extension cords. It's it's hardwired into the electrical system of the home. So from a convenience, uh, reliability standpoint, and uh, from a lifestyle impact, it's it's fabulous. Yeah, awesome. Um, just noting that I might have a, a co-host uh, joining me in a second here. My my dog Bubby. He's seems to be getting antsy, uh, just letting everybody know ahead of time in case it happens. Um, so anyway, so that's very good to know. So I guess then, you know, and the energy storage side, because a backup generator, you know, sounds like a, a pretty great kind of like lower cost investment. You know, what what are the pros and cons then for the energy storage as backup? And, you know, what how do you see that as a differentiator from what you guys are already offering? I mean, if, if all goes well, a home standby gener generator, you know, sits there and uh, you don't hear from it. Um, and so a lot of the time it's just, it's not in use and it, it exercises and stays stays ready to go. But for the most part, it's uh, it's insurance um, storage uh, coupled with solar is really a, a return on investment product that um, has a payback. And as a side benefit, it also offers backup. And so you get kind of a uh, two two benefits out of solar and storage versus a single use case uh, from, from backup generators. So it's kind of really good that way. Um, honestly, I think it, with today's technology, um, running a, a whole home on battery storage um, due to a lot of, lot of factors, some of its compliance and things like that. But, you know, most of your, most of your battery inverter setups are, you're able to kind of back up maybe 7.6 to 8 kilowatt hours of uh, or kilowatts of, of power. And so if an air conditioner starts, for example, uh, which, a, you know, a five ton air conditioner could pull uh, 150 amps at starting, uh, backup, backup battery is not going to start air conditioners for the most part, things like that. So you end up uh, backing up um, 
critical loads and you can back those critical loads up uh, for the duration of the battery capacity. And, uh, and that's, so it's, there's limits to it in the morning, sun comes up, it recharges and you get to do it all over again. But from a pure backup standpoint, it's pretty hard to beat the generator. But having said that, if you're interested in, in, uh, in, uh, climate change impact, if you're interested in, uh, uh, return on investment of making your utility bill go down, um, you know, generators aren't, aren't going to do that per se, uh, as well. So they're, they're different. There is overlap for sure on the backup side, but they're, they're pretty different machines. Gotcha. Yeah. So I guess I was going to wrap by kind of asking you to maybe give me a scenario for each kind of uh, based on, you know, a homeowner's needs. When would you recommend a generator? When would you recommend energy storage? I and mean, you kind of got into it there, but I don't know if you could maybe lay out kind of two case study scenarios for me. Yeah. I mean, I think there's there's areas where um, um, a family may not either have the ability to put solar on uh, either because of homeowners associations or they just don't care to, uh, they're not interested in, in solar energy per se, uh, but they live in areas where the, where the grid goes down a lot. So you could be in, in a Michigan or in a Florida or something like that. And your primary concern and worry is uh, a constant supply of power. Uh, a generator, you know, all in installed on the ground. Uh, our national average is about $8,500. That's equipment, uh, installation, the whole thing. So from a price standpoint and pure backup, that's that's the use case right there. Um, people love it. Uh, rave reviews and uh, we're growing like a weed in that area on uh, solar and storage. I, again, I think um, you do, you know, a properly designed system is going to offset a big, big part of your utility bill. And you are going to get um, a, a decent amount of backup protection. So but the primary driver is uh, is a solar storage value proposition that um, is, uh, is a money saver and a, uh, and a climate saver at the same time. Yeah. So, you know, obviously our audience is, uh, primarily, um, like the solar contractor installer side of things. So just for anyone interested in getting into the other Generac product lines, maybe, you know, especially in these times where maybe business has slowed down considerably because of, um, the, you know, stay at uh, shelter in place and customers not having as much disposable income, but still would like their own resilient system, you know, where can uh, people go to find more info about becoming a Generac dealer or installer? Yeah. I mean, one of the big surprises in getting into the, into the clean energy space was we were, we actually had a concern that maybe the trade would see us or maybe even homeowners would see us as, as natural gas burners, as fossil fuel people. And we were worried about that. We did a lot of research to see how the brand would, would transfer over, but probably one of the biggest surprises, frankly, has been uh, the solar contractors desire to offer solutions to their to their homeowners to their customers, uh, depending on use case to what we just talked about, and uh, we've got a lot of uh, solar contractors that have taken on generators and are interested in taking on generators, and uh, it, it tends to be a uh, a less complex project, a faster project to get on the ground and get turned on, and and so yeah, it's it's a great secondary um, line of business that has a lot of synergies for a solar contractor. So if they want to reach out to us, you can you can uh, go to generac.com. Uh, there's a tab for uh, for professionals or solar for contractors, contractor tools. You go in there. Um, you can either call us or fill out that form, and we'll call you right back. We have a team that does nothing but onboard new new contractors. We've got um, well thought out, concise training programs uh, that get you certified to, to install our products and service our products. And so it's really pretty easy to do. Uh, the installation uh, is one of the questions that a lot of solar contractors have. It's actually pretty pretty simple. Um, the only thing that uh, that most solar contractors don't have is a is a is a plumber's license or a gas connection solution. But we've got um, a lot of connections to help them with that. So it's pretty easy to do, and uh, it is a nice uh, thing to add to your to your solution set. Awesome. Well, hey, uh, thanks for joining us today, Russ, to walk us through all that. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And until next time, everyone, stay safe, stay away, but go solar.